Mr. Jean-Paul de Wynne, who is actually Dutch. He's also working for uh, Jersey Jack Pinball as an uh, art director and animator for anything you see on the screen, but also cabinet art and, and everything else. He's also involved in and he will tell you all about that later on. I'll leave it to, uh, to these two fine gentlemen to tell you all about what they are uh, about to tell. Yeah. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this presentation will be in English, so brush up on your skills. Um, we're going to talk about mostly Guns N' Roses, uh, but Jean-Paul has some information on uh, the development of Pirates of the Caribbean as well. So we'll go through. This is a, a presentation that has a lot of information in it, but I'm going to go through it uh, a bit quickly. But we're going to talk about what it takes to design a game. So. How do we do? And for now, I'm going to walk to the computer and just push okay. the button until okay. you're ready. Do, do we have audio through the computer? Okay, that'll be fine. All right, so there's a lot of parts that go into making a game. Uh, everything that you see, that you hear, that you feel in the game has to come out of my head or Jean-Paul's head or the programmers. Um, and there's a lot of people that take to make a game. There's about seven people in the core group of a game. There's a game designer, the mechanical engineer, the uh, animator, the artist, the programmer, the sound engineer, and I'm probably forgetting someone. We got sculptors, um, and so So we'll go into the play field, and the most important part about designing a game is making it. Physically making the game and building it yourself, and then doing it again and again and again until the game feels perfect. So you can see different iterations of the early uh, Guns N' Roses game. Uh, and there were a lot of ideas that, that change over time, that develop over time as you work on the game, as you work with the licensor, you come up with ideas. Uh, for Guns N' Roses specifically, Slash had a lot of great ideas. Uh, he came to us with a playfield sketch with mechanism designs that he drew himself and that he wanted to see in the game. So as we go through, we see many of the different iterations and how over months and months the, the game keeps developing. So traditionally, games uh, were designed in a, in a 2D design environment. Um, that is uh, not a way that I do things anymore. I now design in 3D. So this game, Guns N' Roses, was the last game that I designed in 2D. And it is, uh, it is evolving. So as you're playing, you're making um, you're getting new information the more often you play, and you get to iterate and keep iterating and keep making the game feel better. So all of these parts are handmade by me. I, I cut them in my machine shop or I weld them in the welding area, um, wire it all up myself, and then this game was actually running on Pirates of the Caribbean code just because that's the code I had. So I would wire in the pop bumper to the same switch as it was on Pirates, and I'd wire in the flippers to the same drives as it was on Pirates because the programmers were all working on other games at the time. So you, you do what you can to make the games work. Uh, there's other old components in this game that never made production, things like the, the catwalk up there. I had ideas that there were gonna be, the moving lights were mounted to those. Um, and the base ramp evolved a couple different ways. I had it coming out in different places. Um, this is more of the final version of the play field after I took the screen out of the middle. But there's again still iterations here. Uh, some of the really, some of the things that did not make production. There was a subway system in this game that was comparable to uh, Star Trek Next Generation. So there were exits to the subway here 
and here that would feed the ball directly to the in lanes, and there were always balls staged underneath the play field. The entrances to the subway system were here, 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 and here. And so anytime a ball would enter one of those, it would immediately kick out another ball into either the left or the right flipper. Um, but as we get further and we get closer to production, uh, that's when the people with the purse strings say, well, you're over budget by about $400. So what has to come out of the game? And that's the way it is for every game, for every company, for forever. Um, and so the subway system, because it had five coils and two metal troughs and three plastics troughs, picking all that out, brought the bill of material down by about $400, got me within budget, and then we, um, we made the game that you guys see here behind me. So again, this is Tut on my robot at the Jersey Jack factory, and then I pounded the inserts myself and, and clear coat it, and then I get play fields in, and I realize I still made mistakes, so here's prototype games. I know people love seeing pictures like this. What's up? So the question was, do we already have a little bit of code? And there is a little bit of code running so that games play well and we kind of get the feel for what's fun and this shot isn't quite working the way we want it to. What if we added uh, some, some interesting, more interesting code on that? Um, so by this time, you have full-time programmers dedicated to the project. Uh, and they're helping to develop rules and, and animations have been in progress for a while. Um, so here you can see one of the first prototypes. You can see the, the balls that kicked out into the subway system or from the subway system that came out right there and right into the inlay. This is the game that Slash had played in the secret video that I can show later. Uh, and this is the final product. So again, hundreds of small tweaks and iterations as the game gets developed. All right, so next we go into sculptures. So artwork. Uh, really defines the game. And on modern gaming, we made three different versions. Uh, we have the collector's edition, the limited edition, and the standard edition. And with that, we had three different art packages. And thankfully, I had someone who was very good at directing art, Mr. Jean-Paul, uh, that kept the whole show together and cohesive. So standard edition, uh, we had an idea that we wanted to do these monster vehicles. And we showed the idea to Slash and Slash's only feedback was that he wanted to be pink. He didn't want to be blue, he didn't want to be purple, Slash wanted to be pink. So that was the art that uh, we, we had for Slash. So the Wi-Fi is a bit spotty up here, so we're on, we're on uh, Jean-Paul's phone. Hopefully things load up. There we go. So there are different iterations here as well, uh, different different art and things that went back and forth to the licensor. Um, Slash was very generous in every asset that he gave us. There was nothing that we couldn't do, and he provided the right kind of feedback for us. So some early concepts of the standard edition was a, was a road case model. Um, and then thought about it, well, wait a second. Pretty sure Metallica already did that. So, okay, let's choose something else. So then we have the, the monster vehicle. Um, and then the different characters and their mock-ups. And you see Slash there in yellow and up in blue, but Slash really wanted to be pink. Uh, and then we came up with the characters on the side of the back box. And you know, none of these characters were quite uh, loved by the licensors. So we went through and Slash you know, was adamant that there must be a, a beautiful woman on, on the back box. Um, we went through a couple different iterations of that, and we wound up with our girl there. Then we moved on to the limited edition cabinet. So this artwork was put together by Arjen Mueller. Arjen is one of the masterminds behind their touring posters. So Arjen made uh, at the time we developed the game, Aryan had done 70 of their tour posters for countries and cities all over the world. Uh, we got together with him and collaborated, and he helped create this art package 
And he has kind of the same mindset as we do, except focusing in the lithograph world. So there's, uh, you know, lithograph side, where people talk and debate, and, and there's trolls about what the coolest posters are. Um, and Arian was very into that scene, so he made sure to put the highest rated posters, not just his posters, but posters from many different artists, um, and put the best ones in. So this is again one of the early concepts that we sent to Slash. And Arian gave us really good feedback. There's a poster in this game that never actually made it to the show, to the, to the concert where it was being performed. So that poster is like the unobtainium uh, lithograph that never made it to production. And because of Arian's feedback, we were able to incorporate that into this, the limited edition cabinet artwork. So that poster, I think if we progress one more, there we go. So that one, which is from Dubai, uh, never made it to the show. And so these collectors all over the world are trying to get this unobtainable lithograph. And we actually incorporated that into the side of the back box over here. All right, then finally the collector's edition. Uh, we worked directly with Slash again. Uh, we came up with some different concepts. You know, how about the Guns N' Roses ruling the world? Or Guns N' Roses, you know, an iconic cabinet like that. Uh, but Slash gave us the feedback that the um, Appetite for Destruction is the most collectible Guns N' Roses iconography there ever was. So try to focus on that uh, for your collector's edition. And so we looked at that, we researched that, some of the, some of the concepts we had. Um, but we went in the direction of Appetite for Destruction and themed it off of the characters from the Appetite album that uh, was banned in the United States, that artwork package, because it is graphic in nature. Uh, was not allowed in the US, it got pulled off of the shelves in the late 80s when it was released. So we used uh, this artwork, and again, this is Arian, he developed this concept and, and brought it all the way through. The back glass was done by a different artist, Jesper Abels, who is Dutch, uh, and there's different, so another part of developing the art packages is choosing the armor color, and I have a paint booth at the factory where I can create different colors, and spray them and bake them and see how they look against the art packages. Uh, sculptures. Sculptures are a big part of the game, so I worked with uh, Matt Reister from Back Alley Creations on making some of the really cool artwork concepts that are, that are in the game. And you see these on the collector edition on the outside of the game. And then Matt did the uh, Axel Rose screaming sculpture. We had the bullet concept that we wanted to, to use, um, but our upper management, and this was a time in the US where gun violence had been very extreme and there were school shootings, and, and we decided not to have a bullet going into someone's head. Uh, because it was you know, kind of tasteless at the time. So we did not wind up shipping with a, a bullet, uh, but the idea was there. So again, more feedback on different things, right? Uh, in order to ship the game, we couldn't have that little leaf hanging over the edge, so we had to modify this sculpture very slightly, bring it in a little bit. I mean, this is more of the iterative process, working with the sculptor to make sure that things are going to work correctly. Uh, we got our hat and painted it up, that was me with a chrome, so I 3D printed this hat at first, and then I painted the buckles with a, a chrome marker just to get the prototype and mock up and show them to Slash. What else do we got? Uh, audio. So I don't know if this presentation part will work very well because we've got uh, some actual audio clips in here, but the audio is a very important part of the game. Good audio um, is great, and you don't notice it, you, you're, you're captured in the moment. Uh, bad audio definitely takes you out of the element. So one of the things that we focused on in the music, for example, um, Slash was able to do original music for us for the game. So the album modes, we showed Slash the concept artwork for diff different album modes, and he created music for those modes. So that is music created by Slash that is only heard in the Jersey Jack pinball machines. So there's 
yeah, all the original songs, we wanted to have sound effects, we wanted to have things that worked well with those sound effects. Um, I have a bit of a music history myself, so when you're playing the game and you're playing, um, you know, the song Chinese Democracy and you hit a shot, you don't want to hear songs that are out of tune or songs that are out of pitch, you know, when you're hearing these th different sound effects. So Slash and Duff and Richard Fortas all got in studio and recorded uh, small segments of music in the right key, at the right tempo, in the right pitch for every single song so that when you hit a shot and you're playing that song, you actually hear feedback in the right pitch, in the right tone, and in the right uh, key signature. So this is, this is the little presentation that we had shown Slash, and um, there is music that plays during this, but we can, we can skip over that. But we showed him this, and he came up with this really cool uh, tune. So that guy can hear it, um, but it's a, it's a very cool tune that he came up with, uh, blues inspired. Oh, Martin might be able to catch it with a microphone. Maybe, if the microphone's on. We do want to hold on to the microphone there for just a minute because there's another pretty cool sound effect um, a couple slides forward. So we did voice acting as well, um, and we got every member of the band to contribute their voice to the game. And there's one of the sessions of um, me and Melissa Reese recording. So this is showing all the different files that were there for the sound effects for the different music. And then we've got a, uh, the, the script that I wrote, uh, 700 plus lines that were recorded for the game. And more and more, and we keep going and we keep building. And so here is, there's Melissa Reese, she's a keyboardist for Guns N' Roses. And this is me in my office in a, in a Skype recording that we recorded with her permission. Um, and this is kind of uh, directing, you know, these people are not pinball nuts like we are, well, except for Slash, he is a pinball nut like us. Um, but I, had, I was explaining to Melissa how these things should sound. Get. So the, the line is, get the extra ball if you can. So she was very nice. She did pickup sessions on the road for us as we came up with new stuff and they were, they were touring and um, 
you know, it's really great to have professional musicians who have recording studios and can do this stuff very well. Alright, so animations. Um, Jean Paul did most of this, but uh, what was fun about this is we had a lot of concert footage, and Jerome DeWin is the guy who kind of edited it up for us so that we were able to take their live footage from their concerts and, and time it with the studio master recordings, um, and then take more of their assets and animate them for the screen. So we've got these, these tour posters from them that we animated for use in the game. And different instructional videos, things that Jean Paul made in order to help explain rules in the attract mode. So we've got this great big screen, right? 27 inch LCD screen. We want to fill it up with a lot of cool information, a lot of things that help you understand how to play the game. So we come up with these different videos and then a user interface that has to kind of show the player everything they need to know about everything in the game with just a single glance. So understanding where you are with all of the different modes, all the different multi-balls, all the different aspects of the game is, is kind of Jean-Paul's job when it comes to animating the screen. And then just a couple of behind the scene pictures. Uh, this was the first time that I got my tour poster artwork package. It just looked so incredible. Uh, this is why I don't draw artwork. Uh, this is my sketch of what I really wanted to do with the Guns N' Roses logo. Uh, something that is kind of a, the sacred cow that you do not touch is, is a logo, right? So for different brands, you cannot touch their logo. We could not um, mess with the Pirates of the Caribbean logo, for example. It had to be exactly the way Disney said it must be. And same with Willy Wonka and same with other games. Um, so, I, but I wanted to do something really cool with Guns N' Roses because they have their uh, their iconic logo that they actually change for a lot of different concerts. So I thought it'd be really fun if we were able to do that as well. Uh, and the first reaction from band management was, "No, you cannot mess with our logo." And then Slash replied to that email saying, "I like it, and it should be in the game." So then band management said, "Okay, it's in the game." Um, <laughs> But this was the, uh, the concept that I drew up and I sent to JP and I said, and it got the idea across and then he was able to actually make it look like a five-year-old didn't draw it and it, it looks pretty good. And so that's down here, I think, on the, uh, on the apron and we've animated it and done some other cool stuff. So this was, you know, during the pandemic was when we were still developing this game. So I brought my collector's edition home and I was testing code and I was looking at videos and, and giving feedback to the team and so my two young sons. The thing they liked most about the game was the lights underneath. So they would just lay underneath the game for, for, you know, for a while and play with the lights and, and that sort of stuff. So he's helping me test. Uh, that's when Slash came in. That's Matt Reister, uh, the sculptor. Uh, this is Slash's girlfriend. And then this is when we set up the green screen so that when you get your high score picture taken, uh, it looks like you're standing next to Slash for a selfie. All right, that is the uh, that is my part of the presentation. So and now I think JP is going to come up here and, and talk more about the animation and, and digital design work.
So I should be able to control this by the telephone, not stand in the back. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about pirates uh, as well. Um, art was done by Jay Zielinski. He's not at Jersey Jack anymore. Uh, he he was actually an animator for Dial In, but he uh, he also created the artwork for uh, this game. Um, and I've got some early prototype pictures. You can see the the three disc spinning disc. There is a prototype Pirates here where we can see the, the original that was taken out, but you can also see that we moved, uh, inserts get moved around as well, um, and, and, and it changes during the development. Um, but it's always cool to, to see the, the white woods uh, and play the white woods. It gives me an idea of what, what needs to go on on the screen and what the timing is for certain shots. And I lost my connection to the telephone, so maybe you can yeah. just touch the uh, pad. There you go. So this is early uh, sketches development of the UI. Uh, in this case, I used Illustrator. I put some things in, in place, and you start uh, mostly start the layout uh, with the early rules that are there. And the problem is during uh, development, more and more more rules get added, and the the place uh, the spots uh, place on the screen is is starting to get limited. So. The next uh, next iterations, you get more rules, and th this was an idea. We didn't know exactly how to fill, you know, fill the entire screen. What are you going to show when there's n when you start a game when when there's nothing going on? It's, uh, it needs to be interesting. So this is a game I have. So um, and then we came up with the, the the map idea, some early ideas where we uh, for each movie I have to follow a path and then. When you reach the goal, you start one of the five multiples. Uh, so another iteration, and, and this is an example where we came up with the, the, the highlighting, the, the spots you just collected, and you see the start of the, the, the chapter uh, uh, gun holes on the top. So these are the, the hand-drawn sketches I did, and then later uh, put in the put in the material. See the the map. I all drew that. Up. It was nice to do something else than just sitting behind the computer and actually do some original drawings. Um, I brought the original drawings. I'm gonna give them to Gerard to put here in the museum. It's a donation, and uh, so for everybody to see who visits here. Um, but he doesn't. Is, is Gerard here? No. No, he doesn't know yet, so don't tell him. <laughs> um, the UI stuff, I, so I found a guy close to me who did this uh, nice art, and, he took, and so it turned out that he was close to me, and I asked him to do the, uh, the artwork on the, on the elements, and he hand-drawn this in Photoshop. Uh, later on, he became an intern and helped out a lot of the artwork in um, on Guns N' Roses. Um, so this is the end result with the animated map. Animated, some yeah, you, you all know who, who played the game. The, this, lining up the, the movies with the multi goals and chapters. The, it's it's uh, something that yeah, it's a, it, it comes like over a month. Uh, not not just like okay, these are the rules in your UI. This is something that gets developed over over time. So this is actually the, the final stuff. Uh, and you, as you can see, st the stuff got... got uh, uh, we, we had a mermaid here first, but then later on someone com comes up with a rule, oh, we, we need uh, combos, and, and, and you start putting... you have to start putting extra, extra stuff in. Um, here is a little uh, Easter egg I put in. This used to be my old uh, sort of uh, logo, and I sort of shaped the JP into the, the island. It's, it's, I didn't want to make it too obvious, but uh, I know it's there, and now you all know it's there. And, and then there is the, the book, the star book, and if you, you, can, you cannot, and if you continue. In one of the pages, there is a hidden message to my family and wife. Um, 
but uh, also a small user egg. These are the different stages of the multiple intros. This is what we sent first to, to Disney to get it approved if they actually like the idea. Then you build it out to another iteration until the final uh, version with all, uh, all the stuff in there. But again, a sketch uh, concept and then a workout version. And it's great to, to work with all the, the transparency channels so you can animate back to the UI by the dust cloud. That's all you know, it integrates really well instead of just starting a movie clip and then ending a movie clip. This was a rejected animation um, because this is just uh, the fifth movie skull and we were not, so they had a, a movie skull that, is, that it covers the entire license and we had to use that. So, and they also don't, didn't approve the integration of a pinball into their branding. Uh, that's, that's an example like Eric just said, you, you cannot touch the logo or any branding or mix it up with your own stuff. These were uh, rejected, uh, they rejected the booze. Um, um, Disney didn't want, doesn't want any alcohol in the game. So we had to remove the labels, remove the alcohol, and the empties, and then the bubbles ended up, ended up being empty in the game. Uh, this is an animation we first created for Match, uh, but that uh, uh, transformed into the uh, Liars guys animation and match became the, um, uh, the, ca the, the the character you selected from the start will be your matching fi if the figure match and so it's something different than just uh, just uh, a number don't tell him don't tell him no after <laughs> so guns and roses Eric showed you quite a bit already what what was in my presentation but we'll go through and we'll so I was able to meet, meet Slash in the naming and just uh, one kilometer from my house, I was able to bring uh, a game backstage uh, and talk to him for about 15 minutes about our upcoming project. And I got the, the, the VIP pass and that was a, actually in, we were able to go into the Golden Circle. I think we were actually be able to go on stage, or at least side of the stage, but we didn't try. That was, you know, in a, once in a lifetime experience, um, and uh, it, later on we had like I had two or three Skype calls with him. Uh, I'm not sure if he remembered me, but uh, he had a good contact with Eric, and we continued to contact by Eric. So it was just one channel. Um, so he played the game. We got the game back. He played it. He was there. So that's uh, pretty cool. Um, I did reset the game, but I, I, I saved the, the, the screenshot. Um, so these are, uh, yeah, Eric showed you early prototypes. This was the first time I saw the white wood. Actually, the only time I saw the game until it was finished, because that was a year before COVID. I developed the game all in Nijmegen. I saw the art finished uh, when the game shipped to Europe. Um, and so we find, uh, so we have several artists. Uh, Dane Henry, is a great artist. These were the first sketches he delivered, but it was uh, rejected because they look more like zombies than skeletons, and skeletons is more uh, GNR Guns N' Roses. Uh, so, and this more looks more like Eddie from uh, Iron Maiden. So, um, got into these uh, figures, the sketches. And um, these are the first sketches for the, the Rocket Queen and um, my Michelle. Um, she is uh, in one of the videos and I thought it was a great image to use two girls and the slingshots just to mix up some girls into the, the man, this masculine uh, world and uh, it turned out really well. So these are, uh, so Dane started sketching uh, ideas um, he sort of had uh, so during the process, we, uh, we, we it was we uh, found out that he was he had a hard time working around his understanding the playfield and working around the inserts and the lights. 
So I started helping out with moving stuff and placing stuff, and he would send me his, his all his finished art, and I would uh, come to the entire file together for uh, printing. And um, so these are the steps. And I, I make pictures of the the, the white weight and project them so we can get a sense of perspective from, from uh, the player. So these are just a few of the many stages you, you have until the final product. There are some uh, uh, Easter eggs in there as well. You got a, a dialed-in building here in the city, but you cannot see it because it's underneath the upper play field. And there is a little hedgehog here in the truck. That's Eric, uh, Eric's Easter egg. It's in, in Pirates, and it will be in his next game, so you'll have to look for it. So the other cabinet, uh, Arjen Bueller, we, we just showed a lot of this. Uh, rejected by Slash, he didn't really like the, the concept, so he continued and into the uh, appetite for destruction monsters. So here you see more blown up. This is the reason why it got rejected. Or actually, Slash wanted to have this on the cabinet, and we were like, eh, we're probably not gonna happen. Uh, so yeah, didn't happen. But um, this is the end result of that uh, game. And then we have Jesper, who worked on the Pirates. I asked him. Maybe within two weeks after he started, do you want to do you want to try to do a back glass? And so he did, and he started, and he took pictures from our the websites we had or the pictures assets we had, and he composed that whole position of different pictures and started painting over it. Then I took a 3D model and placed it into the position I thought was the best, and then he painted over it and then got into the next. Uh, Next slide into the, the end result and uh, small little details like okay this this he, he shoots all these little guys and one of them gets electrocuted so, all these little details that that I think is really fun and in, 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 in pinball art like that's what we want to see and what we did see in medieval madness and all that stuff. so we also did the side plates and matched uh, Arian's uh, art style he uh, added to the, the doctors in the area of the uh, of the coma area and uh, he also yeah he's a great creative person and this cabinet uh, with we just uh, also show yeah different iterations by mark and it, and so we ended up with three different cabinets totally different cabinets in art style and very easy to di uh, differentiate Mark also did uh, all the patches, and I just do, threw in this slide to, to show how much detail is in the, actually put in, in put in all these uh, patches. And uh, it was great to uh, in integration of the theme. There you see the finished logo Eric just uh, sketched up. Um, the, yeah. And so Mark also animated all these posters for the um, uh, one of the album modes. This is, a this is a really early sketch for me to, to do a layout for the game. We knew we didn't we wanted to have the stage and then you collect all the band members, etc. etc. So this is the first. And then you go into a sort of simple 3D modeling. And then you see that uh, I, I wanted to do the, the actual stage, but if you do it, uh, the actual measurements, if you show the next slide, you see it's it's too small so the instruments get very small so I scaled down or I scaled up pieces so it will make it will fill the screen better um, but uh, you know take a look at the uh, I took a look at they had all these stairs those were monitors and actually the these amplifiers are fake those are monitors as well but um, uh, on, on their actual uh, stage and um, and this is the one. So, this is the concert that I went to, and I and I hit this message in there. You can hardly read it, but so the posters swap during the game. But if you come across this one, that's uh, where I went to. Um, 
and these are uh, as a part of the uh, SOM UI where you go from sketch to 3D setup into a final renderings. And one of the, the cool things I think about this game is that it doesn't matter which art package you have, you still ha have all the art packages in the gameplay on the monitor. So you see the, the collector's edition and the standard edition and the, the poster cabinet edition. And this is the, the center of the play field, the, 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 the world map. Um, and then we also have the, the, the fifth, the final wizard mode, which is the, the center with the characters. Um, and there you go to the their um, skeleton form uh, performance. Um, so I animated, so Jasper drew over the skeletons and made them more uh, painterly alike and I animated that those in, in After Effects, uh, made them play to the music track we had um, and I tried to mimic, we tried to see if I can mimic the dance of Axel which is quite iconic as well. Um, so they battle the devil. I found the po one of the posters was about a devil, the Jersey devil, and I found out there was a Jersey Jack or a, a New Jersey, New Jersey state line imprinted in his uh, forehead. So it all came together in the end. Like it was uh, pretty cool. So this is um, when you battle the battle the band or the, bat the band battles uh, the devil. You gotta make shots, your flippers are reversed, or there's uh, all kinds of weird stuff going on. I never reached it, maybe someday. But a lot of work goes into that. And, uh, so that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Sorry. Um, thank you, Jean Paul and Eric. Are there any questions? Because we can take questions, and hopefully they have answers. And if I can walk up to you with a mic, that would be best, so everybody can hear the question. Anyway. If you make the design of a game, you have it in your computer. Do you also program it in Visual Pinball or something like that to play it, or is it only on the whiteboard? I build it for real. Um, I don't program it in Visual Pinball first. I experimented with that early on um, and found that it it can work for some people, um, but I can physically build a machine really quickly and wire it faster than I could make it in visual pinball and I could iterate faster than the uh, struggles I was having making a game work in visual pinball. Uh, currently I'm running beta code on uh, my GNR and it, the, one of the light shows has been altered. It's so easy. Very much higher than you have. Are there plans to change more light shows in the near future? Um, rule updates our, our code updates are still coming for Guns N' Roses. Um, mostly light shows and score balancing is what we're looking to do. You know, After seeing the way players play the game, um, we want to make everything that we poured our heart and soul into something that the player cares about. You know, Right now, I don't see a lot of people play Slash solo because it's not worth a lot of points, and it's a big risk without a lot of reward. So score balancing is one of the things that's going to be coming. Um, to GNR future code. What are you doing with your, with your white woods? Um, I have each of the first white woods I cut. Um, I disassembled the playfield itself, and the playfields are on my wall in my office. Um, right beneath a final prototype, printed prototype of each playfield. So I have kind of the stages and then you see the final game uh, after it. So, we 
we brought um, some goodies with us. We brought some trans lights and mini play fields and slash hats. If people want to uh, pick something up, I'm happy to sign and personalize them for you. Um, and we'll be here and, and uh, yeah, come, come, come get something. Come get something uh, over there. Um, in the meantime, uh, I we're going to set up for Eric, who's going to do uh, the next presentation about uh, how he got Magic Girl uh, working, which is quite an interesting uh, project, uh, so to speak. Uh, that will be in like 15 minutes, I believe, if I, if I look correctly at the time. So please stick around for that. In the meantime, go plunder Eric.